Materials. They describe the way an object appears on your screen. In 3GS and React Ruby Fiber, there are many different materials available. If you go to the official 3GS documentation page and you search for a material, you will see there's a material base class and currently 17 other material classes available. I highly recommend you to check this out yourself because every material has a short description about its purpose and it either has an interactive demo or some open source 3GS examples. The code for every example is available in the 3GS GitHub repo, but also accessible on the example page itself. Let's discuss some of these materials while using them in our 3D React Free Fiber scene and explain their purpose. While discussing the materials, you will notice that some materials are being affected by light, while others are not. The materials that are not affected by light are more performant, so in case you can use those, then I recommend you to do that. And in case you want to follow along, the starting code for this video is available on my GitHub and is linked in the description below. Let's start by adding fog to our scene, which we will need later on to test some properties of the materials that are not affected by light. The attach property tells React Tree Fiber to what property of the parent the fog should be assigned. Let's create a function named example torus, which returns a torus and pass it an implementation of the material base class as a child, for example this mesh basic material. This material does not respond to light, but it does respond to fog, which is why you see the depth of the torus. It's also possible to ignore the fog in our scene by the way, but that's not what we want in this case. To make it more clear which parts of the torus are affected by fog, I made the fog color tweakable by using the use control hook from Liva. I set the default color of the fog to black, since that's the default color of 3GS as well. Now let's start discussing the properties of the base material class, which are available for every material. With the opacity property, you can change the opacity of an object. Let's use Liva to see the opacity changes real time. As you can see, nothing currently changes. This is because you'll have to set transparent to true as well, which is false by default because of performance reasons. You can also set the depth test to every material, which determines if objects closer to the camera should be shown over objects that are further away. This is what you usually want, and it's the same as what you see in real life, because you can't see an object behind another one. But in some cases, you might want to toggle this off, because GPUs struggle to handle depth and transparency together. For example, if we would add a fully opaque box behind the torus, it will seem to be transparent, while it actually isn't. And this is because the torus ignores depth in this case. Setting the depth test property to false will result in a render where you can't rely on what's rendered first because it will simply show the object that was rendered the latest. This means that if you want to set the value to false then you'll also have to make sure yourself that the rendering order is correct for your scenario. The following property which is available for every material is depth right, which as well needs to be true to show closer objects over objects that are further away. This is because depth right writes the distance from the camera to the object to a so-called depth buffer. The depth buffer is keeping track which object is the closest for every pixel. That will be used by the depth test to decide which object to show. Because the cube has depth right set to true, that object will actually write to the depth buffer, which means it gets rendered over objects that have depth right set to false. Then we have the alpha test property, which is the minimum opacity to show the object. Any surface where the opacity is below this value won't be visible at all. Then we have the visible property, which simply makes the object visible or not, and the side property, which decides which part of the material you get to see. The front side, the back side, or both sides. So those were some of the most important properties that can be set for every material, which means we can now dive deeper into material specific properties. And since we are already using the mesh basic material, let's start with that one. But to do so, let's first download a so-called environment map. This can be used on some of the materials to reflect that environment on the material, which will mostly be visible if the material is reflective. Let's use Polyhaven to get such an environment map. The downloaded file is an HDR file, which is a bit more difficult to load directly into 3GS, so I recommend you to convert it into 6 different textures first with this HDRI to cube map tool. We want 6 separate textures, which will be wrapped around the camera like a cube, where the sides of the cube are infinitely far away. React Read Ray provides a use cube texture hook that accepts the 6 textures as first argument and the base path as the second argument. Now that we have the environment map available in 3GS, let's set it to the material by passing the env map. 
This will immediately change the result because by default the reflectivity of the mesh basic material is 1. But let's use Leva to see what a less reflective material would look like. Add the torus string as a first argument to add the reflectivity to the torus folder. As you can see, when we lower the reflectivity, it becomes harder to see the environment map on the object. Now let's move on to some of the other available properties. You can for example set the wireframe property to see all the edges of your geometry. And it's also possible to apply some textures like the map and the alpha map, which is explained in more details in my previous video about textures. Then, next, we have the Mesh Normal Material, which is a material that maps the normal vectors to RGB colors. The normals determine the direction that the surface is facing at, so if you closely look at one side, for example the right side, you will see that that side is always pink. Then we have the Mesh Matcap Material, which also doesn't get affected by lights, while it does seem to. It uses a so-called matcap texture, which contains the material color and shading to create the fake light reflections and shadows on the material. So to use this material, we will first need to download a matcap texture. I downloaded mine from the matcaps repo of Nidorks, which I'll link to in the description. Select one that you like and download it to your project. I renamed mine to matcap.png and put it in the public matcaps folder. Loading the matcap is as easy as loading any other texture with the use texture hook. You can pass the texture to the matcap property to see the results. As you can see, it seems like the material reflects the light, but this is actually all calculated using the matcap texture. The mesh matcap material also supports flat shading, which will show the raw faces of the geometry and stop making the surfaces look smooth. To show this, I will lower the amount of radial segments and tubular segments, which will make the geometry less smooth. In case you don't pass the flat shading property, it will use the default behavior in 3GS, which is smooth shading for all materials. Then we have the Mesh Lambert material, which is the first and most performant material that reflects light. It uses the so-called Gauraut shading model, which calculates the shading per vertex and interpolates the results over the connected faces. It has the same properties as the Mesh Basic material, besides some light related properties like the emissive color to give it a default color if there is no light. To set the color that's shown when there is a light shining on the object, you will need to pass the color property. Let's also use Leva to change the position of the light in the scene, so you can see that the material reacts to this. As you can see, only by changing the position of the light, the color of the material changes. Next is the Mesh Fong material, which is similar to the Mesh Lambert material, but instead uses the Fong shading model, which does not calculate the shading per vertex, but per pixel instead. This gives a more accurate result, but is also less performant because there will be more pixels than vertices in an object, which means more calculations. Next to the color and emissive color, this material also has a specular color, which defines how shiny the object is and of course what color the shine should be. The lighter the color, the more shiny it will be. If you make the specular color black, then it won't shine at all. And next to that, it's also possible to make the shine sharper by passing the shininess property. By decreasing this value, you will get a more rough result compared to a more metallic result if you increase the value. And lastly for this video, we have the Mesh Standard material, which is a material that uses metallic and roughness. It's based on PBR, short for Physical Based Rendering, which can be used to make your object look realistic under all lightning scenarios. Let's add a tweakable metalness and roughness property with Leva and change the amount of segments to make the torus more smooth. By increasing the metalness and decreasing the roughness, you will get to see a torus with a very metallic look. And as you can see as well, it will also respond different to light depending on your camera angle. And as with every material so far, because it will give a more realistic result, it will also be less performant, so only use it in case you need elements of it which are not supported by better performing materials. Besides all those materials, there are still a few others which I recommend you to try out yourself on the 3GS documentation page. And that was all for this video. I'd love to hear what you think of this or one of my previous videos, so if you have anything to say then please let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you did and subscribe to see more related content. Ciao!